content of the exam. Uh, let's just wait five more seconds and then talk about it. The exam is comprehensive. Start from the first day. Okay. That's for exam one. Exam, final exam is also comprehensive. Start from day one to the last day. Final exam is not open book. You have sheet sheet. Okay, certain number of pages. Uh, first time you have open book, make sure you have book. Right now we have Victor Power Gresser, Hong Kai Ho. Isaac is not here yet. Yes, it's not here yet. Okay. When it is 11.05, they're going to be late. And when it's 11.30, they will miss. Okay. Uh, let's talk about last time a little bit. Last time, we talked about how to calculate pressure drop for the case of stratified flow. Okay. Um, we finished how to get the flow pattern, how to calculate. Uh, transition A, B, C, D, and transition K. We talk about flow pattern. We talk about after we know that the flow pattern is stratified smooth, what do we do? So we get, we say Fi equal to Fg, tau i equal to tau j, right? So we do that for stratified smooth. Tau i equal to tau j for the case of Bg is a lot more than Bl. Okay. So, so if you know that it's stratified smooth, we use x value, y value to get h tilde. From h tilde, we get our geometric relationship. You feeling me, Hong? You got it? So x and y will lead me to h tilde. From h tilde, I can calculate every a. After I know every A, I can calculate actual velocity. Uh, when I know actual velocity, I can know actual random number. With actual random number, I can get friction factor and then shear stress. Then I can get tau i. Then they use one of the equations over here to get um, pressure drop in the okay. That's stratified smooth. If it is stratified very, once I know that it's stratified baby, option that I have is this. Option 1, part 0.0142. Okay, Fi equal to part 1, part 0.0142. Or I can use the border in Shaw, Shaw it out, select the um, have. This is like the, their own crucial relationship for the, the calculation. Okay. So in the exam, I expect that if I just tell you the flow rate, in situ flow rate, you should be able to tell me how much is the pressure drop. Of course, first you have to prove that it is stratified flow. It is more likely to be stratified flow because you just study stratified flow case, right? If it's something else, probably you cannot do. What if I have certified part of slug flow? Can you do it? Yes, you can do it because it's still certified flow. What if fin fall back? What do we do? If fin fall back, okay, now everyone is here. What time is it? Okay, 11.04. Alright, we're fine. Uh, Yes, if the film fall back, can I use, can I still use one of this equation? Can I use this equation if the film fall back? Yes, I can, but I have to change something. Can I still use this equation if the film fall back? Yes, I can, but I have to do something. So, tau wl instead of v square, vl square. Change that to 
VL multiplied by absolute value of VL. So if you fall back, VL is negative. Negative uh, absolute value or negative value is positive. So this term become negative. So tau VL will be negative. Put this back in there, it worked like before. If the film fall back. Okay, recall that this equation comes from this kind of derivation. In the derivation, we say film move forward, right? Liquid film move forward. So when I have liquid film move forward, tau WL go backward. So if the liquid film itself move backward, this means tau WL will move forward. Right? But we don't have to do anything with this. We just say, okay, keep everything the same way. But instead of V square, we use V multiplied by absolute value of V. That's it. Let's open the page that specifically talk about this. It is on the slab floor. Uh, 108. Okay, let's do 108. You may think that this is slab floor thing, but it's actually related to straight five flow case. Look at 108. You see tau g? It's fg over 2 rho g absolute value of vgtb multiplied by vgtb. VGTB is gas velocity in the Taylor bubble zone. What about tau I? VGTB minus VRTB and everything put the absolute value on. <coughs> VGTB minus VRTB without absolute value. So this is for stratified region of slug flow. This is to account for the, the case where the film fall back. Got it? So in your case, if the film ever fall back, use this, it's okay. Then we use the same common equation. Look at this one. Does it look like equation 3 by 3, 4? Does it? So I have, oh, it's not 3 by 3, 4. It's not 3 by 4. 3.28. You see this? This is straight five flow page 65, right? Tau WG minus tau WL plus tau I. Okay. Now look at page 108. Is this the same thing? Is it? I don't have this one has tau wg, sg over ag. This one has tau f, sf over am. Okay. A little bit different. Okay. It looks similar, right? Minus tau g, sg. Okay, this one doesn't have that. This one has minus tau wl, sl, al. Okay. Plus a something. This is minus something. So it's, it looks similar, but that is that. This is, the last one is plus delta rho g sine theta, but this one is minus delta rho g sine theta. So if I multiply minus one in this equation, okay, so we have, it's the same one, right? I just trick you a little bit, put minus one over there. So this means, you can, even though you don't know about uh, slug flow completely, you can do the um, stratified part of slug flow already. Make sense? Any any question for me? We have questions. What's the content of the exam? Yes. Really? No, 
I said, what is the content of the exam? Everything that we covered till last talk, last week then. Until Tuesday. next Tuesday. Oh, next. Everything that we cover until next Tuesday. Okay. Oh. But it didn't right? Yeah, exam starts there. Oh, okay, stop. We we'll cover until next Thursday. And the content of final exam is what? Everything. Okay. Um, any question about stratified flow? No. Let's do slack flow concept. Okay. Uh, last time we already talked about this a little bit, right? About the definition of each variable. What is VTB, huh? Did you watch the video? So, uh, of the what? Gas inside the bubble, right? Yes? So, VTB, is that the velocity of gas inside the bubble? Yeah. Wrong. Is the velocity of the interface. Gas inside the bubble moves slower. Okay. So we are talking for the case where the bus travels faster than the passenger, right? So when the bus travels faster than the passenger, there will be some passenger drop behind. So there is some gas over there. Okay. Gas in this gas pocket moves slower than the interface itself. Okay? VGTB is gas in bubble zone. VLTB is liquid in bubble zone or liquid film. Okay? VGLS is gas velocity in the slab liquid body. This is the definition. I hope you get familiar with this. We just use this thing. Everything that is sub LS is inside the slab body. Everything that is sub TB is in the film zone. Good. Okay, now we deal with the case where we have the particle. In picture A, article is over there. Slab, pick it up. Roll it inside make it move from you forward. Initial particle is just ahead of the slug. The solid particle is scooped by the slug and travel through the slug. That's picture B, right? We pick it up and scoop it, make it move with the slug. The particle is checked back into the trailing liquid film and travel through it. So the particle go into the slug, and then it release to the film, travel through it, and then in picture D, the, the particle completes its travel through the liquid film and it's just ahead of the following slug. The question here is, what is the length, L net? The given parameter is LU, LS, LF, LM, VTB, VGTB, VLTB, VTLS, VLRS. Can you calculate it? So everything is given. We need some assumption. Okay. So our net is a net forward distance traveled by the solid particle during the process of during the passage of a slab unit. Assume no slip between solid particle and the flow. So think about the solid particle as a liquid particle. It just travels, it's no drag behind. If liquid move at Vm, solid particle move at Vm too. If liquid move at Vfim or VLTB, the solid particle move at VLTB too. First question, is this our net? equal to LU. Yes or no? No. No. I have 
the front travel by from here to there. So the front maybe travel by. Um, okay, if the front travel by L U, the particle will travel by L U meter. Less or more? Less. 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 Like I said, the bus Less. travel faster than the passenger, right? So L U is better than L N. L U, of course, L U is more than L N. L N is more or less. If you look at the picture, more or less like okay L S, but we need exact answer. L S is a slab body liquid part. Let's go through it by look at the following question. The time required for the slug body front interface to travel at the distance of LS meter is what? How long does it take for the front to travel at the distance of LS? I have a hint here. Travel time is travel distance over the speed of the front. The front move at VTB, right? At the speed of VTB. The distance is LS. Correct? So the time is um, what? LS over VTB. Just like that. The distance required for the front to travel LS will be LS over VTB. That one, LS over VTB. Second question. The particle inside the slug body travel at the speed faster or slower than the slug body front interface. Slow. Slower. Okay. The slug body front interface travel by LS. The particle inside the slug body travel by how many meter? It has to be less than LS. But how much? So the front move by LS will take how much time? LS over VTB, right? LS over VTB second. That same amount of time will be utilized by the solid particle. And we say, okay, velocity is constant. So this solid particle, when it stays inside the slug body, it travels at what speed? Yes? Body. Yeah, solid particle, travel inside. Yeah, yeah. Tra speed, speed. Is that the same speed of liquid inside the slug body? No? We assume that there's no speed. What is the speed of the liquid in the slug body? The variable, how did I define it? V L L S, right? VLLS. So the particle travel inside the slug body at the speed of VLLS. And it takes the amount of time of LS over VTB. Right? Because that is the amount of time that the front needs to travel by LS. So this tends to be velocity or speed multiplied by time. So I have, that's why I have Vs multiplied by Ls over Vtb. Vs you can substitute by Vlls. For horizontal flow, Vs equal to Vlls equal to Vm equal to Vglls. Or basically, gas in the slug body travel at the same speed as liquid in the slug body for horizontal flow. And that velocity equal to mixture velocity, Vm. And mixture velocity is Vsl plus Vsg, or total flow rate divided by total constant area. Okay, that's what they found. So we can use it just Vs. For inclined case, we may say VLRS to be specific. Alright, <coughs> question four. Oh, look at this one. 
Why do you have integration? I say integration from 0 to Ls over Vtb of Vs dt. When do we not need integration and when do we need integration? Kai? Hong Kai Ho? When do I need integration and when I don't need integration? No answer yet. Any answer from you? Should I change? Victor! When do I need integration and when I don't need integration? When the, when the is not functional time, we can we can there's no movement. Okay. When velocity is constant. So if velocity change with time. Actually, this, this thing, look at, look at the integration limit. Integration limit is from zero to the time that the front travel by Ls. So when the front travel by Ls, the particle travel backward, right? So the particle stay in here. And it's, when the front travel by Ls, the particle, actually, it moves forward. Okay. The particle moves forward. The particle stay in the slug body. It moves forward. So if it, it moves forward, it moves forward at the velocity of Vs. And it takes the time from 0 to Ls over Vtb. So that's why we integrate with time, because that is about the time that the front travels by Ls. But when we integrate with time, it moves in space, right? The particle moves in space. So if every location in the slug body has the same velocity, we don't need to do integration. But if it's not, then we have to do integration. Maybe at the front, it's a little bit faster than at the back, then we have to do integration. Most of the time we just say it's the same everywhere to be easy. Okay. We don't know velocity profile and we, we already assume that every location in the slug path has the same velocity. But you know that cannot be true, right? Because even single phase flow, for laminar flow we have parabolic shape. The middle path travel faster. For Turbulent flow, it's almost true, it's like this. Okay. It's almost the same everywhere in the middle, just near the edge that is different. So for slug flow, the center point velocity is just 1.2 times the average velocity. It's almost the average velocity. Okay. So if we say, if we neglect that, so we may neglect the fact that it may change with Axial location too. So we don't have to do integration. Okay. Integration or not is it's about whether it's changed with z or not. Okay. The moving observer who, who travel at the speed of Vtb, he or she will see the interface to be stationary and the liquid inside the slug body travel backward at the speed of what? Victor? VLLS minus VTB. So which one is more, VTB or VLLS? What you said is actually true, and we get minus value, and it tells the direction. But okay, let's just because I said the moving observer will see it travel backward, so this has to be a positive value. And the moving observer move with the interface, right? 
at the speed of ATV. Everything that in the slug body will appear to be slower or move backward with respect to moving observer. So moving observer will see it travel backward at the speed of the difference. Very confused. Is it very confused, huh? Because it is. Why would, why would we think about Let's say I have two cars. Oh, come, 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 come here, come here. Come. Yes, yes, come here, yes, come here. Come here, come here. You too. Come um, here. Yeah. Okay. Stand over there. Stand over there. No, 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 no. Uh, come, come here, come here, come here. Start with the same part. Start with the same part. No, no, no. And you move that way. Go, go this way a little bit. So, yes? yes? You move forward. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Don't, don't move yet, don't move yet. Okay. okay. Huh? If yes, walk two steps. You walk one step. Okay. Every time that he walk two steps, you walk one step. Okay. Come back and restart again. Come back and restart again. Okay, now this time, okay, do, do like before, but yes, you look back at him. Every time that you walk, every time that you walk two steps, he will walk one step, but you will look at him. Okay, look at him, look at him. Do you see him moving backward with respect to you? Yeah. Yeah, at what speed? Half of your speed, right? Yeah. Okay. So, like with the stationary observer, we'll see you move at two steps per some time, and we'll see you move at like uh, one step per three seconds or something. But you will see the relative velocity. And Hung will see you move faster than him, but not at two steps per three seconds. We'll be just one step per three seconds because you just Faster than him a little bit. So if I have two cars, one car move at 50 miles per hour. Another one is 100 miles per hour. You can, you can go back. So the car in the back, you see the car in the front. Move faster than that car at the speed of just 50. Right? For the stationary observer, stationary observer will see that car move at 100 miles per hour. It's too fast, you, you get speeding ticket, but okay. So for the moving observer in the car, we'll see that stationary observer move backward at the speed of 100, right? And we'll see the car in the back move backward at the speed of 50, or 100 minus 50 equal to 50. So the perceived Velocity or the observed velocity, the velocity that the moving observer observes is relative velocity. Moving observer doesn't observe the absolute velocity, and probably there is no absolute velocity. Let me give an example. So, when I look at you, what is the velocity that I observe? Zero, right? Because you doesn't move in my frame of reference, right? But think about this: you stay on Earth. Earth move around itself very quick. Twenty-four hours it have one revolution, and three hundred something days it also move around the sun. Why I don't observe your speed? Because I cannot observe your absolute velocity. I can just observe your relative velocity, right? Make sense? I never know what is your true velocity. Because we, we are both on Earth, right? So I just see the relative velocity. Make sense? So we never know. So if we go in the car together, the car move at 100 miles per hour, I see you as stationary with respect to me, right? Make sense? Yeah. 
So I did see you move at 100 hours, a uh, mile per hour. Moving observer or any observer observe only the relative velocity. Okay. So moving observer, the move at VTB, will see the liquid inside the slug body travel at the speed of VTB minus VM or VTB minus VLS because the uh, liquid inside the slug body travel at the speed of VM or mixture velocity or VLS but moving observer will observe just the relative velocity which is VTB minus VLS okay question 5 that moving observer in question 4 you see the liquid inside the film travel backward at the speed of what I said Correct. So question five will be VTB minus VLTB, VTB minus VS. Oh, look again. Why do you have bar on the top of VLTB? It's the average. As is that average over space or over time? If it is average over time, it may change with space. Okay. But if it's already average over space, I think that's also over time too. Okay, let, 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 let me ask you this. The liquid inside the, the field, is it laminar or turbulent? Sometimes it's turbulent. Most of the time it's laminar. You want to watch the video again? Then you incline the pipe. You have the slug flow. Sometimes liquid flow back and at some point it doesn't flow. Right? You recall that? I have to open the video again for incline flow. So in the liquid film, when it's right next to the slug body, like that part, it moves fastest when it's away from the slug like that part, it moves slow. Sometimes it can even move backward. Sometimes it can even move backward, right? So, liquid in the field doesn't have the same velocity in every location. But on average, with respect to space, I say it's V bar. Okay. Average velocity in this part is V bar. I take Velocity at that point, plus the velocity at that point, at that point, at that point, at that point, add together, divided by number of points, I get the average velocity. Make sense? Okay. So that's why I have V bar over there, V R T V bar. Question 6. The moving observer will see the particle traveling shown in page 1 as a particle moving backward from the front from one front of the slug to another front of the next slug correct? moving observer move at the speed of VTB if I am if I'm the moving observer I will see the particle which is that particle move backward so I am a moving observer, I see the particle move backward through the slug body and then move backward through the field. You agree? Okay. Uh, the time required for the particle to move through the slug body for the moving observer is how many seconds? Victor. LS over VTB minus VS or VLS okay and then this is the time right that's your answer okay so with the answer it's about the distance over velocity 
and the velocity is the relative velocity. Okay. So the time required for the particle to move through the slug. The particle, the slug, the particle move through the slug. That means it travel for the distance of L x. Okay. And the velocity that they see, the moving observer see is a relative velocity. So yes, if you want to calculate the time, you have to do it like this. Okay. And yes, yeah, correct. I just look at the answer. Question seven. The time required for the particle to move through the liquid field for the moving observer is what? Isaac? Time should start with length over velocity. Yeah. So we LF. LF? Do you want to call that? The uh, LF, okay. Divided by what? VTB minus VTB. VTB. Minus V or VLTB. LF over VTB minus VLTB bar. Oh, oh, oh. I have bar. Okay. If you don't want to put bar on, you have to do some kind of integration. So look at this one. I integrate from 0 to Lf. Okay, let us say if everything is constant, doesn't change with z, I can take this from the integration limit, right? And I get 1 over Vtb minus Vltb. And I integrate of Lf, integrate of 1 from 0 to Lf, give me Lf. So the answer match to this, right? But it's not constant. It's going to be constant if you put bar on. If you don't put bar, this means VRTB is changing, it's getting slower, 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 slower away from the slug tail, slug body tail. So we have to integrate it over the distance of dz and from 0 to lf. Okay. So if we happen to know the function between vltb and z, so this line I would read it like vltb is a function of z. So if I ever know that function, I substitute that function in here and I can do integration. Okay. What if I know the value at several point, but I don't know the function. Can I do the integration? How? Yes. yes. How? I have a film. I know value at this point. Okay, maybe point one. Value at this point, point oh nine. Value is this pi, pi o seven. Same distance. How do I do this integration? Yes. I just give up. I don't know the function. Can I? Yeah. Okay, Isaac. Look like you know how. How do we do it? from 0.07 to 0.09 at first with the function and then it's really plus what, what value are you going to use for VLTB? Are you going to use point seven? Are you going to use point nine? So this value is a weird value is a value of VLTB. So VLTB in meter per second is slowing down from part one, part oh nine and part oh seven. How are you going to do the integration? Over there. Please. And this is nothing, there's no trick. In the actual case, it is like that. And we have to integrate it. You need to bring from 0.07 okay. to 0.09. Are you going to put loss? How, how, how are you going to do it? I get confused. Oops.
So I erase that. How are you going to do this integration? You take it as constant, take it outside, substitute the value of 0.07, is that what it is? I don't mind. Yes. If other students cannot answer this, except you, because you took me from the class. We use trapezoidal method to be easy, right? Use trapezoidal method, okay? I don't teach it here. That is in, okay, uh, um, yeah, I go over it later. Trapezoidal method, like, okay, you, you have a function value at various location, okay? So I have the graph, graph look like this. I don't have the line, but I know the height. Okay, let's, let's change color a little bit. I know the height. I know this height, I know that height, I know that height. Trapezoidal method means draw a trapezoidal shape. So I draw that shape. Calculate the area under the curve. 0.5 multiplied by summation of the height on the side. This height plus that height multiplied by the gap. Right? And then I do the same for this thing. That's trapezoidal method. You can do it with Excel with no problem. Use trapezoidal method. Okay. Uh, that will be the time come that you have to do that, but not right now. Just be aware that we may have to do it. Okay, let's do question here. For the stationary observer with respect to the pipe, stationary observer doesn't move with the slab front. Okay. He or she will see that the particle takes how many seconds to travel inside the slab body? Or we will, or don't, don't answer it yet. This amount of time is the same as longer than or shorter than the time experienced by the moving observer. Answer the second question first. Is it more, less, or the same? Less. Less. Who agree with him? The same. Same? How? Do you want to go with the same or less or you want to do more? The same? Okay, okay, okay. The amount of time that is experienced by the moving observer and stationary observer, is that going to be the same? You think it's a little bit slower, right? Would you like to think that it's a little bit faster or, or longer? Okay, look at this note. Velocity is a lot less than light speed. Okay. I know that in some theory, okay, relativity, you move very fast, the time extends, the twin come back and appear to be younger or something. No, we are a lot shorter than that light speed. So, if it's shorter, you think if I, if I call you, you're on the bus, it travels very fast, and you get a signal at different time, then you are on the ground. Or if I drop something, drop a cell phone to the floor, we will take a shorter period of time if I move, so that if you move, and Victor doesn't move, do you see the same thing? That's the question. So this takes one second to go from this part to this part. Do you see it shorter than one second? Then Victor. Or if you stop, you see it different way. What do you think, Isaac? It should be the same. Unless your speed go approach the light speed. This um, Newtonian mechanic doesn't apply. It will be, I think I'll be a little bit longer. Okay. But now, it's not that yet. So it's the same. The amount of time that stationary observers see cannot be calculated easily for the particles to travel backward, right? For the particle to travel. 
but we use the advantage that they see the same thing. So we use the time that experienced by the moving of server, which is that. So we just put that over there. Right? So this is the time that travel through the slug body. And that is the time that it travel to the film. What about our net? Distance is time <coughs> multiplied by velocity. So when we know the time, different frame of reference experience the same time, but it experiences at a different speed. So when we, the strategy here is time, delta t, multiplied by velocity, plus another time, multiplied by velocity. Then we get our net. The velocity that we use over there has to be the real velocity not the relative velocity. Because our net defined in the stationary frame of reference. Let's go at our net. What is our net? It's the length from the start point to the end, right? So first it gets dragged by the slug body and then it gets dragged by the film. And then the next front hit with this. That's our net. So the question is, when it stay in the slug body, it spend how much time? You already have it. When it stay in the film, it spend how much time? You already have that. And then it hit with the next front. So you use the time that it stay in the slug body multiplied by velocity in the slug body, VLOS or VS, plus the time that it stay in the film multiplied by the velocity when it is in the field, which is VLTB. Add them together, that's the answer. Right? So that's why I have this. So first component is time, this is velocity, and this is another time when it's in the field, and that's the velocity in the field. If we write it like this, we want to put bar on VLTB. If you don't like bar, integrate it. This time we just uh, put V inside, we integrate it, put V inside, we integrate it. Okay. So this form is the same as that for the case where everything is constant with distance. So if everything is constant with distance, it's just remove that, remove that, put out S. Remove that, remove that, put out F. Right? And then you get this. Great. Now over here is a typo. Put LF over there. Okay? And if you don't come to class and you just look at this material and you don't know that it's typo and you do the test and you get it wrong, it's not my fault. Okay, you come to class. Alright, question. Last part is about HLSU. Okay. For the case where, number one, the liquid hole-up in the slug body is 0 0.7. The liquid hole-up in the film is 0.1. The film length is 60 inch. The slug length is 30 inch. The total liquid hole-up is a weighted average based on the length of each part. And it's equal to what? So I use this formula. Don't worry about the integration sign. We say it's the same everywhere. So HLTB of film height is the same everywhere. Actually, it's not. But let's assume that it's the same everywhere. So I will do 0.7 multiplied by uh, 30 plus 0.1 multiplied by 60. And everything divided by 60 plus 30. Or this. Okay? Then we get slug in the liquid wall. So, in the lab. Okay? Sometimes we not be able to measure just film hole up or slug hole up. Sometimes we measure and we get the whole thing. 
So what you can do is you measure it several times, average it, and that should go close to HLSU. Okay, it's like you need liquid hole up. Good? All right, let's move on. No question? 